powerful leaders are not confined to the pages of textbooks, but linger in the whispers of the wind and the stone walls that have borne witness to their ambitions. These titans of leadership emerge from the shadows, shaping the course of civilizations with an iron grip that echoed through the ages. From the art of war to the delicate dance of diplomacy, they were masters of strategy, cunning architects of empires, and wielders of unparalleled influence. Brace yourselves as we unravel the tales of these powerful rulers who wielded not only swords, but the destinies of nations, leaving an indelible mark on the annals of time. Sargon of Akkad Within the historical region of West Asia, Mesopotamia, now present-day Iraq, was a powerful and formidable ruler of the ancient Akkadian Empire named Sargon of Akkad, also known as Sargon the Great, who ruled between 2334 and 2279 BC. Unlike other rulers, Sargon was an excellent conqueror and the first to build an empire. During his young age, Sargon, only a mere officer then, dared to defy the established order, leading him to orchestrate the defeat of the King of Kish. However, this daring act was only the beginning of Sargon's audacious journey to greatness. Now, after defeating the King of Kish, Sargon marched northward, subduing cities and rallying an army that would become the heartbeat of his dominion. He would then continue his conquest southward, confronting the ancient city-states of Sumer in a decisive battle, shattering the combined forces of his enemies. Sargon was an excellent army commander. He captured all of southern Mesopotamia, including Syria, Anatolia in modern Turkey, and Elam in western Iran, making the Akkadian Empire the first of history's multinational empires. But Sargon was not only a mastermind on the battlefield, but a visionary administrator who birthed a new era of governance as many future rulers and kingdoms followed in his footsteps. Aside from his administrative expertise, Sargon was innovative. He formulated various origin stories to justify his right to the throne, unlike the Sumerian rulers who preached the ancient narrative of the divine right of kings. Now, before the tale of Moses echoed through the ages, Sargon claimed a similar beginning to further gain the support of the people during his era, which was marked by a widening gap between the privileged nobles and the poor masses. In the legend of Sargon of Akkad, inscribed in ancient stones, Sargon was said to have been a child of a holy prostitute or temple priestess placed in a basket at the Euphrates River, found by a benevolent gardener. However, once Sargon had effectively gained the trust of the masses, it was said to have turned against the masses who supported him during his reign, crushing down on the revolts who were discontent with his rule. Despite this, the Akkadian Empire stood for nearly two centuries, making Sargon one of the most powerful rulers in history. Pharaoh the Ramses II Amidst the golden sands and mighty monuments of ancient Egypt was another powerful figure, Pharaoh Ramses II, often hailed as Ramses the Great. Ramses II, or Ozymandias in Greek, was an exceptional ruler, infamous for being the wicked Pharaoh in the Bible during the times of Moses. Ramses was known for his clashes with sea pirates, Levant campaigns, and daring Nubia expeditions. Yet, his most extraordinary story was the Battle of Kadesh in 1274 BC, in which Ramses fought against the Hittite Empire in a clash of titans. This conflict was a generation-long rivalry over the control of the coveted lands of Canaan. Hence, Ramses, fueled by a desire to defeat the Hittites, prepared for years. After forming a solid army and carefully constructing supply depots, 
he set forth from Egypt into Canaan with four divisions, Ammon, Re, Ptah, and Sutek. Little did Ramses know that the Hittite king, Muatali II, lurked just beyond the hills near Kadesh with an army of 3,000 chariots and 8,000 infantry. Leading the Amman division, Ramses marched north, unaware of the threat ahead at Kadesh, and so 2,000 Hittite chariots charged across towards them, wreaking havoc on the division of Rey. Amid the chaos, Ramses rallied his guards, leading to a daring charge that scattered some Hittite leaders into the river. Eventually, luck smiled on him when the division of Sutek arrived, crushing the looters. As the battle raged on, the division of Ptah emerged. By sunset, the Hittites were forced to withdraw into Kadesh, giving victory to the Egyptians. On his return to Egypt, Ramses adorned Egypt with monuments and murals, each narrating the tale of Kadesh in vivid detail as he immortalized himself as Ramses the Great, conqueror of the Hittites. Genghis Khan It is not sufficient that I succeed. All others must fail. Genghis Khan Imagine a powerful leader who didn't just want to succeed, but believed that everyone else must fail for his success to matter. That was Genghis Khan. He wasn't an ordinary ruler, but one of the most powerful rulers and the leader of the unstoppable Mongol invasions that reshaped empires and our world today. Genghis Khan, born into Mujin, united the nomadic Mongol tribes under his leadership in 1206. Genghis Khan was a brilliant military strategist who employed innovative tactics and utilized a highly mobile cavalry. His conquests expanded the Mongol Empire to encompass vast territories including China, Central Asia, the Middle East, and Eastern Europe. Now, as Genghis Khan conquered lands across these vast territories, the impact was devastating as around 40 million lives were said to have been lost. But here's the twist in the story. The massive loss of life was reported to have unintentionally helped the environment. With so many empty areas, nature took over, turning fields into forests and the carbon emissions from human activities dropped. Scientists from the Holocene study of a global model of land cover in 800 AD believe that out of all the four major historical calamities that could have impacted the climate, such as the fall of Ming China in the 17th century, the conquest of the Americas in the 16th and 17th century, the Black Death in the 14th century, and Genghis Khan's invasion in the 13th century, Genghis Khan's invasion stood out as it caused a measurable drop in global carbon dioxide levels. Surprisingly, Genghis Khan's influence on the climate wasn't just about destruction. His conquests also had personal consequences, and he was said to have acquired many wives and daughters from the lands he conquered. Rumor has it that many men today are his descendants, carrying his legacy through generations. Ogadai. Among Genghis Khan's successors and offspring was a powerful ruler named Ogadai, who was his third son and unexpected successor. After the demise of Genghis Khan, Ogadai's two older brothers, Juchi and Chagatai, they fought over the right to inherit their father's legacy. Juchi, being the eldest, was doubted by many that he was indeed Genghis Khan's son since an enemy of Genghis Khan had kidnapped their mother before his birth. Chagatai, in turn, asserted that he was the true-born eldest son. Hence, to avoid a civil war with the descendants, Ogadai assumed power as their compromise heir. Ogadai recognized his limitations in military expertise during his era, yet he ascended to a level of power that even Genghis Khan had yet to attain by embracing wise counsel and relying on capable subordinates who expanded the Mongol Empire's frontiers to its peaks. 
Ogadai orchestrated simultaneous campaigns across vast distances from Mongolia. Through a swift horse relay courier network, his orders reached field generals who operated independently within their camps but remained bound by Ogadai's strategic vision. To the east, the Mongols engaged in conflicts against the Jin dynasty, supported by newfound alliances with the Song dynasty in southern China. Ogadai Khan personally led this battle until 1232. Afterward, he returned to Mongolia, and by 1234, the Mongols had successfully subdued the Jin dynasty. However, alliances changed, and they had to fight against their former allies from the Song dynasty in a new war in southern China. Meanwhile, Ogadai's forces went into the Korean peninsula, taking control and further invading India as they marched into the Indus Valley. They reached the Delhi Sultanate, claiming land in present-day Pakistan and the Punjab. Simultaneously, another Mongol army took over Kashmir, showing the empire's influence in that region. In the west, Ogadai's armies came out from Khwarezm and conquered Central Asia, Khorasan, Afghanistan, Persia, and Mesopotamia. Then, they went north and took over Armenia, Georgia, and the Caucasus. They went further into Russia, making it their servant and Eastern Europe for many years. The Mongol forces, led by Subutai, were about to go into Italy and Central Europe when they received news that Ogadai had died, bringing their conquest to a halt as they needed to return to Mongolia to choose a new leader. Tamerlane Born in 1336, Chagatai Khanate, now modern-day Uzbekistan, Timurlane, known as Timur, came from the Turkicized Barlas group in Transoxiana. Tamerlane's ascent to power began in 1370 when he led the Turkic tribe members in the service of Chagatai Khan, embarking on military campaigns across Western, South, and Central Asia, the Caucasus, and Southern Russia. He defeated various powerful entities in his conquests, including the Khans of the Golden Horde, the Mamluks of Egypt and Syria, the emerging Ottoman Empire, and the late Delhi Sultanate of India, making him the most influential ruler in the Muslim world. Being the last of the great nomadic conquerors of the Eurasian steppe, Tamerlane's empire paved the way for the rise of more organized and enduring Islamic gunpowder empires in the 16th and 17th centuries. With his Turkic and Mongol heritage, Tamerlane claimed he shared a common ancestor with Genghis Khan on his father's side. However, whether he was a direct descendant of either side is uncertain. Despite this, Tamerlane invoked the legacy of Genghis Khan during his lifetime, having a vision to restore the Mongol Empire, and some sources, like Gerard Shalian, suggest that Timur saw himself as Genghis Khan's heir. Now, during his rule, Tamerlane wrecked once thriving cities like Damascus, Aleppo, Baghdad, Sarai, Ryzen, Delhi, and Isfahan. He committed atrocities beyond comprehension and constructed scary monuments and pyramids of severed heads, as well as imprisoned prisoners within conquered city walls and built towers from the skulls of his victims. As Tamerlane's relentless cruelty increased, fate intervened in 1405 as he fell gravely ill while preparing to invade China. Hence, the once terrifying conqueror met his end, but his legacy continued. Legend has it that Tamerlane's grave carried a curse. In 1941, Soviet anthropologists exhumed his remains, only to find a chilling inscription inside his tomb. When I rise from the dead, the world shall tremble. Two days later, the Nazi initiated the most significant military operation in history against the USSR. However, the Soviets barely survived, prompting Tamerlane's reburial with full Islamic rituals in 1942, just before Operation Uranus, which paved the way for a major Soviet victory at Stalingrad. So, what are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comment section below. 
and remember to hit that subscribe button. To watch more insane and unique stories, click on the video options on the screen. You won't regret it.